remember what the haters talking about. What's up, family? Jay-Z is once again explaining why his partnership with the NFL is for the same cause as Colin Kaepernick's. It's just that the approach is what's different. Jigga sat down for an interview this weekend with NYT ahead of Super Bowl 54 and redefended his collaboration with the league, which many saw as a betrayal of Cap and everything he stood for. Jay also took a lot of heat at first, but he seems okay with it for the bigger picture. He tells the paper, as long as real people are being hurt and marginalized and losing family members, then yes, I can take a couple of rounds of negative press. Going on to insist he is still fighting for people of color, only now from a position of strength and influence. Case in point, Sunday's broadcast will apparently include a PSA video one in a series per NYT that aims to tell stories of black men and boys killed by cops. Getting back to Kaepernick though, Jay kind of sticks to his guns in the new interview as far as addressing the guy's situation, acknowledging he was done dirty by the league but also strongly suggesting it's time to move forward and start looking for new solutions. Jay said no one is saying Cap wasn't done wrong. He acknowledged that he was done wrong and that he could understand it if it was three months ago. But that was three years ago. He said, what are we going to do now? People are still dying. He added that we are two adult men who disagree on the tactic, but we are marching for the same cause. However, Cap doesn't seem to see it that way, and neither does the people who support him. Well, most people who support him, because I'm going to tell you something. I support Cap, but I also support Jay-Z. Now, some of you people who say, well, it's got to be one or the other. I don't see it that way. I don't think it had to be one way or the other with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. I think that what happens is that the oppressor preyed on that division. If everybody agrees that we all love black people and we all trying to get from under this rule of oppression, we're trying to get these people foot off our necks and we're trying to build our communities up and defend our communities and, and, and get this equality that America promises but seems to be so damn elusive for black folks, then we have to sit down and figure out how to get there, even if we have disagreements on the tactics. Your way may be the nonviolent way getting there. My way may be the violent way getting there. You know, I may be one of those dudes who want to march, hold up signs. Somebody else might be an organizer. Somebody else may decide, you know what, uh, you know, I'm going to go out here and ride. Somebody else may decide, you know what, I'm going to protest or I'm going to use my money to protest. I'm going to use my money to help the cause. It's different ways to get there. This is what people don't understand to me. It just seems like people just feel like it's got to always be one thing or the other. And, you know, the oppressor, he prey on that. They prey on that division. As soon as they see like since any type of division, they go right in and make sure that they widen the gap. So in my view, I know some of you guys are like, oh man, Jay-Z. And then even when Cap took the deal, y'all was like, oh man, well, Cap, man, fuck Gap. You know, like I don't understand how somebody can be all for somebody. A person can have so many good attributes and do so many great things, and you be so behind them all the way, and they do one thing that you don't agree with, and you're like, fuck oh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. What if somebody did you like that? I mean, think about the times that you wasn't at your best. Think about the times when you didn't make the best decision, 
or you didn't make the decisions that your woman agreed with, or your your mother, your father, your teacher, your coach, you know, somebody in the neighborhood, you know, Miss Robinson, you didn't, she didn't agree with what you did. You was at your worst, and they still supported you. They still loved on you. See, that's what I'm saying. Like once I identify that you are really for the people. And y'all can say what you want to say about Jay-Z, but I just don't see as many people out there putting in the kind of work. I don't see as many people out there putting in the kind of work that he actually puts in with his philanthropy work. I just don't see it. So when you're on that type of level and dealing with the kind of money that he's dealing with, some people just can't really see you doing business with certain kinds of people. They don't understand that sometimes, you know, you have to get in to move around. You got to get in to see what's going on in order to make the change. You know, sometimes it's, it's easier to make the change from the inside than the outside. And I'm far from a sellout, but I understand that this is chess, not checkers. Uh, it's a big, a lot of people have a big problem with, with Cap saying, well, Cap took the money and he didn't tell nobody. He settled and, you know, he's still trying to get a job and blah, blah, blah. The thing is, is that that money that Cap settled for was, it, it wasn't really a settlement. It was the money that was owed to him. You know, that was money that he had already worked for. So it ain't like these was, this was the punitive damages instead of accumulated punitive damages or anything like that for the other ongoing lawsuit that he has. So he still has a beef with the NFL. He has a grind with the NFL, and that's ongoing. And so we just don't know. A lot of the inner workings of, of these deals, stuff, we don't even know, y'all. So, and we just get all hype. Oh, man, Captain, uh, man, Jay-Z. Some people just don't like Jay-Z, right? It's just like Kobe Bryant. You know, some people just didn't like Kobe Bryant. And you can say anything about Kobe Bryant. And, oh, Kobe, man, look at that nigga. Man, I don't care nothing about Kobe. Kobe Bryant, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe. You know, it's just Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant, anything about Kobe Bryant. Now that Kobe Bryant is dead and he's no longer a threat, people going, well, you know, it ain't worth the discussion no more, right? That's because he's no longer a threat. It's like when, Mark was, it's like when, when Ali was in his prime. He was a threat. And... A lot of people who praise him right now hated him, hated his guts. Same thing with Martin Luther King. A lot of people who praise Martin Luther King when he was alive, uh, I mean, when he when he died, they hated him. They hated him when he was alive. But as soon as when, as soon as he died, he was no longer a threat. They started looking at his work, and really, they really kind of respected his work all along. Many people respected his work all along, but they was just threatened by. Uh, his his power uh, to to change people, to make changes, you know, to to even to even to motivate love and 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 unity. People were scared of that. So uh, I'm not a Jay Z hater. I'm just not there. I, I just don't see it. I'm not a Colin Kaepernick hater. I don't see it. Now. What I'd like to see is like to have a, a, I'd like to have a better understanding of what the marching orders are. Like, okay, we 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 all in this together, and we're talking about we're gonna do this, we're gonna boycott this, we're gonna do this. Well, what are the marching orders? Like, you know, we ain't got no marching orders. Like, what it is, and what's the plan? Like, you know, and I, and I'm with Jay Z. Man, it's been three years, and all of these. Football players are still playing football. You know, ain't nobody, there has not been a mass exodus of ball players leaving the NFL. And there has not been a mass exodus of college players saying, well, I'm not going to put myself in the draft. So what are we fighting for? Now, concerning this uh, in regards to this PSA that's supposed to take place during halftime, I think it's supposed to be halftime of the Super Bowl. I don't know 
Wait, what? Like, is it just a feel-good commercial? Is that what the NFL is doing? Is 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 the commercial just a feel-good commercial? Like, oh, we're coming together. It's a kumbaya. It's a Pepsi commercial. Or will the thing? Will they have a follow-up to it? Will there be some teeth in this thing with a follow-up? And you know, whether the NFL can can be in law enforcement because the NFL owns the day of the week. They can actually go up against law enforcement. You know, imagine the NFL leaving cities, like shutting it down. You know what, I, what kind of revenue the NFL make in these cities? It would be devastating to any economy that they're in, even the big economy, even if the Texans left Houston. That would be a major loss of jobs and 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 income a huge loss of revenue you, you got to think about it. it's not just the team and the tickets it's the hotels it's the transportation you know it's the fuel it's food it's concierge services it's a lot of things that people don't even consider those NFL teams bring a lot of revenue into cities. And that's why cities fight so hard to get them and keep them. Now, I've heard people say the NFL is using Jay-Z. You think Jay-Z don't know he's being used by the NFL? Of course he does. He's also using the NFL. Fair exchange ain't robbery. If you cannot be used, you're useless. So being used is not all that bad. The problem is when you're misused. Support for Jay-Z does not mean deficient support for Kaepernick and vice versa. No more talk. What the ladies talking about?